today is the day that I go back into court. I haven't slept all night, and it's just been an emotional roller coaster for the last six months. Is this it for the rest of my life? Is this as good as it gets? I'm not going to give up the fight for my daughter. I'll let you all know a little bit later how I get on. So many things go through your head of what you think you're missing out on without having a father. When you don't have a father, you go through life thinking, who's going to teach me the birds and the bees? Who's going to teach me how to shave? Who am I going to have my first point with? I sampled something and I can remember something of my father, but I didn't get to do it myself. You know, I have a very vivid memory sitting around the breakfast table and as he was a butcher cooking the Sunday breakfast. I think I was six and a half or seven years of age at the time. And he told me he was coming along. We were th there was like an annual or a Christmas musical, and I was playing a tulip. I was the tulip from Amsterdam, and I remember seeing this silhouette. I saw this shape at the back of the room, and I was like, "That's my dad." I remember waving, being distracted that I didn't even sing. It was more to wave to my father at the back of the room, and then the song was finished. The lights came up, and it wasn't my dad. And my dad didn't show. The day that I realised I was going to be a father was uh, incredible. We're IVF. We waited a really long time to get the news of our daughter. As, as excited as I was deep down, the feeling I had was uncertainty. Um, it wasn't a confident feeling as in I'm going to be a great dad. It was more, what if I'm no good as a dad? Will I be strong enough? Will, because of the things I didn't have in my life, uh, they become a big uncertainty in your mind more so than I'm gonna be a great dad. It's actually, am I gonna be a really bad dad? Am I gonna fail as being a dad? How can I be a dad when I've never had a dad? That's when it really kicks in, when you're standing outside the room in the theater to go in, that's, that's the most frightening, exciting, anxious time that I think I've ever experienced. I held my partner's hand and rubbed her head and everything goes silent and then the doctors are doing what they need to do into delivering the baby and the way that she was delivered, mum had to go into recuperation and uh, the responsibility sort of fell on, on, on my chest, literally. Um, to bond with my daughter first. It was nerve-wracking. Um, and you kind of like, you start doing the whole thing, like, you know, you understand that now you're there to protect them. It's probably like the first time that you really think of a dad. Like, wow, my dad. breakfast in the mornings, we had our sing songs, we had our artwork. I dropped her to crash every morning. Oh, hiya! Daddy! Yes, baby! If you're going through a certain process, you build your mind to know it's going to come to an end, or you at least sort things out, but uh, it just happened all so quickly, so I don't think anybody could have predicted. I certainly couldn't have predicted. Oh, there are your jingle bells! Are you going to shake your bells? Shake them. Yeah. 
I was with my daughter seven days a week. <laughs> Daddy's gonna get ya. Oh, here I come, here I come. The reindeer's coming. <laughs> and then just like that, it stopped. I see ya. <laughs> she doesn't understand. I mean, today when I dropped her home, she wanted to walk me around the house, you know. Show me your things, you know. And my mum was like, you know, saying, okay, say bye today. She didn't want to let me go. She was like, no, no, daddy, daddy. Look at Elf, look at this, look at that. And she holds on to him now really tightly. She's not even two yet, she's two next week. And she definitely understands that you're gone or you're leaving because she understands the routine now. And it kills her. She cries being dropped home now because she understands the process. She cries on a Monday morning when I drop her to crash because she knows that's it for a while. It's torturous for her. I remember the pain myself as a child. So I know exactly what she feels. Like I've been there, I've felt it. And it aches and it hurts and it's because she loves me now. She understands that I'm her father. Not her guardian, her father. But she needs me just as much as she needs her mother. Uh oh, it's falling apart. I've heard when I walk out the door, screaming my name. I love you. See you, baby. Bye. It's Christmas. I just feel really robbed from being able to be the Father Christmas or. Great thing about my daughter, she brings a lot of volume into the house at the moment. She'll just come up and hug you. She'll say, up, up, daddy. And then she throws herself around you, like really throws herself around you and she squeezes. She's just the most amazing child and creates a lot of joy and happiness and all the things that create sound. I have done everything to be there for my daughter. I have fought, I've gone to court. Being unmarried and the relationship over, you're put in a very difficult position. When we first separated, the time that was taken from me, which was 14 weeks, my daughter was distant and that bond and connection was gone. But I have fought really hard to get it back. The only way I'm going to maintain a bond is by making sure that I am there and that I do it in the most dignified way. I fight in the most dignified way. You clothe her, you feed her, you cuddle her. And then when the breakdown happens between the parents, if you want to see your child, you have to go through your solicitors. Even though your name's on the, the birth cert, The hardest part is thinking that you'll never get your daughter back. Like, I want my daughter more in my life.
you're powerless. And that's, that's not how I would imagine a father should be in any child's life, especially my daughter's. I want her to think that I am courageous, I'm strong like a bull, that I will fight for her. She's just the most amazing child. So it's gonna be difficult dropping her back. And then it's back to just, you know, having your meal by yourself and the silence that you hear at the moment in the room. So I've just been to court and uh, I was today was pushing for more time to get extra hours with my daughter. I get one overnight a week and two, two and a half hour visits during the week. And the judge thought that because my daughter was two years and two months, it's a little premature and a little young to offer more time. This time we have appealed 